Greetings from the Empowering Temple of Praise Church, currently being constructed at 3615 Reed Street, Fort Worth, Texas 76119. Thank you for joining us. For those of you who are not joining live, thank you for even videoing or watching the video um, on our morning service for this Sunday. Prayers have already been made, already spoke with God. Let's go ahead and get into this powerful word that will encourage you. And once you encourage, I acknowledge or, or I admonish you to not just keep it to yourself, but to share it with somebody else. I've been seeing only about five shares, but, but 50 views. Well, hey, if, if you didn't enjoy it, that's fine. But you need to share it if it blessed you even a little bit because it may bless somebody even much more. Um, so let's get into the word. There's a word from the Lord in the gospel according to St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 22, verses 31 through 60. I won't read all of those verses, but I want you to do it in your quiet times after the message that will give you a blessing of the whole context of what the message is today. But just for this message, um, I'm going to read some verses, and I'm going to skip some verses as well. But I want you to go there with me if you have it. No matter what format you have it in. St. Luke chapter 22 verse 31. From the Big V version. The Break It Down version. Here is what is recorded. Jesus says. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked if he could sift you. All of you basically. Like wheat. Verse 32 says. But I prayed for you. Simon. I prayed that your faith would not fail. When you have overcome, I want you to help other brothers come on over to be strong as well. He already prophesied. Ain't that son? Verse 33, but Simon replied, Lord, I don't know why you tripping. I'm ready to go with you right now. I even die for you. I can go to prison for you. Jesus answered, I tell you what, Peter, you're going to say three times that you don't even know me. And after you do it that third time, the rooster is going to crow. And that's later on today. Verse 47, while Jesus was still speaking, a crowd came up. A man named Judas was leading them. He was one of the 12 disciples, you know, those that were following Jesus. Judas approached Jesus and gave him a big kiss. Jesus asked Judas, are you really handing the Son of God over? The son of man over with the kids? Verse 54, then the man arrested Jesus and led him away. They took him into a high priest's house. Peter followed from afar off. Some people there started a fire in the middle of the courtyard. Then they sat down together. Peter sat down with them. And when he sat, a female servant saw him sitting there in the firelight and noticed that kind of looked like somebody that was with Jesus. So she said, this man was with Jesus. Verse 57, Peter said, no, I have not been with that man. I don't know what you're talking about. The woman, woman, I don't know him. Verse 58, a little later, someone else saw Peter. Said the same thing. You're also one of them. No, Peter replied, I'm not. About an hour goes by and another person spoke up and said, hey, this fella had to have been with Jesus, I'm telling you. He's from Galilee. Verse 6, Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And just as he said that last denial, the rooster crowed. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Let's go back up. Go back up with me. To that 31st, 32nd verse. Simon, Peter, Satan had asked me if, to, to turn you over to him. He wanted to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. I prayed that your faith will not fail. Yes, y'all heard this before. I'm going to use for a subject from which to preach. There is still a future after faith. There is still a future after failure. I want to encourage someone today who's going through a failing moment or a failure moment right now. 
God wants me to let you know that there is still a future after your failure. Matter of fact, you are looking at me right now. You may be looking live or you may be looking on a recorded video. However you are looking, it's not an accident. God knew you were going to be watching. And he wanted me to remind you, hands down, no hold barred, that there is a future after failure. Yes, you failed. Yes, you messed up. You slipped up. And you were about to give up. And God said, let me send this message through Bishop just for you so that you will understand that there is a future after failure. He ain't saying that you won't fail. He's saying that there is a future after you fail. Oh, I love that because every one of us have messed up. Every one of us have slipped up. Every one of us have failed at something or some, someone. And you know what? Sometimes we fail ourselves. Sometimes we we, th we call ourselves failure. And the enemy utilizes that to try to make us break down, start taking medicine, start uh, giving the doctor, start giving notices about how crazy we are and how psychedelic we are and how all because we were in a situation where we consider ourselves a failure. And this message is for you. Why? Because you were about to give up. You were about to throw in the towel. You were about to jump ship. And God said, no, Bishop, I need you to give them this message because there is a future. Yes, after, after you fail. Yes, yes, there's a future before you fail. But the enemy wants you to fall so that he can use that to make you fail. But Jesus said, you know what? Get bought all that. There is a future after my people fail. Yes, yes, yes. And you may have gotten this video from... from um, Somebody who shared it to you. Hey, however you got it is not an accident. You you were scroll, scrolling through Facebook and all of a sudden you saw this video. You saw the title and you're like, you know what? I've been going through some stuff and I need to press this button and let's see what this preacher is talking about. God said it's not an accident. It's by providence that you were here to listen to this message. There is a future after you fail. Matter of fact, uh, just last night, I posted a video of my cousin, about my cousin, Rosin Gatson, absolutely. She called me. It blessed me. Oh, it blessed me so. Because she was in a coma for almost seven weeks. The doctors had almost given her up. They said it didn't look good. She's in one of the bad states that, that, that they've seen um, in other patients. Call the family to tell the family, the immediate family, that same thing. That it, it just don't look good, you know. But we're a praying family. I mean, you know, prayer works, right? Prayer changes things, right? And, and the fact that she called me, it blessed me. And I couldn't really talk until I got my senses together. I was so grateful. And, and, and I was like, you talking like ain't nothing wrong with you. Oh, my goodness. You talking like ain't nothing wrong with you. She's like, well, yeah, well, my arm and my hand, and she started doing different things. She said, and right now, I still got the trach in my throat. Oh, my goodness. Some of you don't even know what that is. She said, I still have the trach, but she's talking like I'm talking. I still have the trach. I'm like, trach, you got the trach? In your throat, yes. I but they, they gave me a little gadget that I put on that allows me to speak. I said, but you speaking like you don't have nothing in your throat. You got tube in that hole in your throat, and you talk. Come on now, how many know they ain't nothing but the power for the magnificent power for of power of God? And that's why I'm here to bless somebody to let you know that same power for God that took her from seven weeks, almost seven weeks in a coma, and brought her out, that she can talk like ain't nothing happened. It's that same God that wants me to tell you that there's a future after failure. Don't give up because you are going through. Don't give up because she left. Don't give up because he left. Don't give up because you your finances are not where they should be. Don't give up because your car broke down. Don't give up because they laid you off. Don't give up. I mean, whatever the case may be, God wants you to know that you may have made a bad decision. You may have, have taken bad advice. You, you may have listened to someone you shouldn't have listened to. You may have gone out on a date that you should not have gone out of. You may have gave, given up the cookies and, and you feel bad about that. It doesn't matter how much you failed, how much you feel like a failure. 
God want me to tell you that there's a future uh, after failure. See, I, I, I got to say this too, T. Uh, that whether you are vaccinated or not, I got you. God still loves you. You know that right here. But let me help somebody. I'm like the Pope. Let me go ahead and put that out there. The Pope said the other day, I'm paraphrasing, that he don't understand why nobody wouldn't take, would, 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 would fail to take the vaccine shot. He doesn't understand. I don't need him. He's like, well, if I can take it, the Pope, and you know, everybody put the Pope on a high level. You know, he doesn't do anything wrong. That's what people believe, right? And that's why they do all those things for the Pope in this right the, the tube he be riding in. Now he in a tube all the time and yet he still got vaccinated. He, I love that example that he said. But there are still people who won't get vaccinated. But here's the deal. There's a lot of folks who after they go in the hospital and then they go in the ICU and they almost die and they and some do and then they'll turn around and say, please, that's the worst decision I ever made. I feel so bad that I didn't get vaccinated. It affected my family. It affected my loved one. It affected my neighbor. And I don't know what I was thinking. I was listening to stupid people. I made back. Oh, I got you. All that doesn't matter when God gives you another opportunity to get it right. And that's why people, the enemy will want you to feel so down on yourself that you stay down. The enemy wants you to just focus on the decision that you made and, and call it a bad decision, a treacherous decision. And it may have been, but yet God gives you another opportunity to get it right. It's time to get it right. Oh, I love that. I love it. I don't get mad when folks say, uh, 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 I wish I had done it, and I should have done it, and I should have gotten the shot, and if I didn't get, if I had the shot, I probably wouldn't be in this. Video. I don't get mad at that. I love the fact that they understand that that mistake, still God gave them another chance. Grace covered them even through the bad decision, the bad choices that they made. And see, I don't want you to, for those of you who are unvaccinated, Right, you may be anti-vax. I don't know, but you are unva Hey, if you don't get it, fine. But if you do, I want you to know that if God gives you an opportunity, another opportunity, you got to know that yeah, you may have failed, but there's a future after your failure. See, I found out not too long ago that there's a who was it? My my two soldiers, and I, I, I you know. Put on Facebook for for the family members that, that let them know that I, I I'm gonna forget them and uh, I won't. It's hard losing losing folks you care about. You know whether it's your mother, father, sister, brother, immediate family. You know you expected that. But uh, I lost my two soldiers. It, it it bothered me to the core because it was suicide. Affected me. I mean, it impacted me, uh, you know, in a huge manner. Because when I talked to them, they smiled. At when when I was talking to them, it was all, "Hey, I saw it. Hey, what's up?" And with, with one saw it, Mason, it was all, you know, good. What's up? Hey, how's it going? With my other soldier, it was, it was all right. I'll see you tomorrow. And everything all right? Yes. I'm gonna invite you to the church. Okay, I start. And then right after that, suicide. It hurt me to my core because what the enemy does is he lets you get, he puts you in a frame of mind that makes you feel like there's no hope. He, he puts you in a frame of mind that makes you feel like there's no tomorrow. He, he, put, he, he makes you... He puts you in such a, a state of pain, not physically, and it could be, but mostly mental. Because when you are mentally disturbed and you are mentally thinking that there's no future, then he can easily talk to you and say, you might as well end it. You might as well get rid of it, of itself. You know, you, you know what will get rid of your pain? Death. That's what the enemy does. And what he's basically telling those people who do that is that there ain't no future. Because you failed. You messed up. You ain't going to recover from that. Ain't no way you're going to recover from infidelity. Ain't no way you're going to recover from, from what you did with, with your kids. Ain't no way you're going to recover because you didn't do this before. Ain't no way you're going to recover 
recover from that bad relationship, that bad financial decision, that bad investment. There's no way you're going to recover for buying a car for $20,000 and it's worth $100,000. Ain't no way you're going to you recover from buying that thing off of Facebook uh, and, and it won't work on a dime. Ain't no way you're going to recover from that. No, you made bad decisions. Every one of us make bad decisions. But God saying, you think you failed in that? That ain't nothing. You got a future after whatever bad decision you have made. You say, okay, Bishop, uh, you say I got a future, so, so what's a future? I'm glad you asked. What's a future, Bishop? Here, here it is. Let me tell you what a future is. A future summed up is basically just this. It's later. <laughs> I like that. A future is later. Because what the enemy puts in folks' mind is that there's no tomorrow. The enemy will have you thinking that it's all over with. Ain't no way I can get through this. My heart is heavy. My tears are, are all over my eyes. My hair is snapping. I, there's no way I can get through this, so I'm done. That's what the enemy wants you to believe. But God wants me to remind you that he's a liar, and the truth ain't even close to being in him. And because of that, you've got to know that you still have a future. There is a tomorrow, even in your current situation. The devil wants you to believe that your current situation is permanent. But I'm here to tell you, it is not. It is not permanent. Your situation will change. You just got to hold on a little while longer. Hold on a little while longer. Don't give up because God says you still have a future. Here it is. Let's walk this text. I'm looking at this text and I love this here because Jesus is cold blooded. I love Jesus. It's amazing um, how Jesus responds to folk and how he elaborates on things. I love his parables, but it's it's amazing. I love it. A lot of people don't understand the sense of humor that our Lord and Savior has. And I love this. Like, here, here's this text. Watch this. Jesus says, uh, Satan, Peter, Satan wants to. He wants me to turn you over to him, basically. I'm paraphrasing. Watch this. Satan wants you. He want to have you. This going to sound familiar to some of y'all because some of y'all feel like I ain't done nothing but why Satan bothered me. I hadn't done a thing but why is Satan picking on me? Watch this text. Satan wants you, Peter. And if I were Peter, I would have asked, why does he want me? I ain't doing nothing wrong. I'll die for you. I'm following you to the T. I got your back, Christ. So why is he following me? And if I was Christ, I'm paraphrasing. In my spiritual imagination, I believe Christ would say, he's messing with you because you are following me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know some of y'all looking like, man, I go to church every Sunday. I read my Bible. I go to Bible study, and I, I try to do everything right, and I'm going through hell. But I look across the street around the corner at my job, and this joker cussed five times in, in, in a six-word sentence <clears throat> and don't know how to spell God. Is an atheist to the core, and yet he seemed to have what I want. Oh, my goodness. See, that's what the enemy will put in your mind to make you go that route. But 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 watch what Jesus does. Jesus, Jesus says, listen here, let me tell you, I, I love this because he warns us. Let me tell you, Peter, Satan came to me. He, he wanna want me to turn you over to him. He won't want to holler at you. Oh, well, 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 Jesus, I know you. You said no, right? No, I, I didn't. I didn't say no. Oh my goodness. Don't miss it. I, I didn't say no. What, what, what a minute. He came to you and asked for permission. Yes, because he has to get it. Uh, and you said no, you ain't going to. No, I didn't say that. Let me tell you what I did, though. Oh, I loved it. He said, Watch this. He said, I, I prayed for you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. oh, I loved it. I'm warning you. That Satan is going to get to you. He's going to try to mess with you. He's going to come against you. I'm giving you a heads up. He had done it, but he's getting ready to. Watch this. Y'all, Jesus tells us already. He tells us to the day that's what he's going to do. I'm telling you, 
he's going to get permission to mess with you. He come and ask me, I'm going to give him permission. But let me tell you the good news. The good news is that I'm on your side. I prayed for you. Oh, okay, you you good. What you pray? What you pray? You pray that he don't, you don't bother me. No, I, I, I just told you I gave him permission. What? Well, what you pray for? I pray that's in the text. I pray that when he does, not if, oh my goodness, he's going to mess with you. He's going to come against you. So when that happens, let me tell you what I pray. Oh my goodness, I love this. I pray that when he comes against you, that your faith that you have in me will not fail. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's my prayer. I love that. My prayer is not that he won't mess with you because I control that. That's the temperature I control. My prayer is that when he messes with you, that the faith you have in me won't fail. Oh, I love that, y'all, because that's exactly the prayer that God gives to us every day. Hey, I'm going to allow Satan because he asks all the time. He's going to mess with you. You, so you don't need to wonder, why am I going through this? I gave them permission. You did? Yes, I, I gave them permission. And, and I gave them permission because I pray that your faith won't fail when you start going through it. Oh, my goodness. Somebody needs to know that right now. You are looking and wondering why you're going through Are you following Jesus? Well, that's the answer to your question. God gave him permission. But here's the deal. I love this, though, because when God gave him permission... God, oh my goodness, I don't even know if y'all can see this. When God gave him permission, here's, here's what he did. This is what God gave him. He gave him a hall pass. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. What you mean, Mr.? Yeah, yeah. When, when God gave him permission, he gave, he gave the, the enemy a hall pass. What you, what's a hall pass, bitch? you glad you had. Here it is. When, when he gave him permission, you see, and I've been out of school a couple of years, right? So, so I don't know if they changed it, but back in the day when I was in school, the only way we would be able to go from point A to point B is with our hall pass, right? That's the only way. The only way we went with the hall pass. If you didn't have this, you're in trouble. If the principal or the hall monitor saw you in the hallway, you were in trouble if you didn't have a hall pass. But if you had the hall pass, what they would do is look at it, and it would show where you come from, and it would show the place you are authorized to go. You couldn't go nowhere else. You could, you were authorized from the hall pass to go from here and there, and that's it. And when you finish that, you return back to what you were doing. You can't go nowhere else. And that's why I know that God gave the enemy a hall pass for Peter. Got Peter's name on. But the good news is that Jesus said, I pray that your faith won't fail. And you know if anybody can get a prayer through, it's Jesus. Because <laughs> he's praying to himself, basically. I'm praying. The manifestation fleshly part of me is going to talk to the spiritual part of me. And I'm going to tell me, oh my goodness, that, that I want you to use your power, power that you have to bless Peter, to give him the strength, to give him the encouragement, to have the faith to last when the enemy has the authorization to come against him. I can't even say that no more. The whole pass was given to the enemy, but here's the deal. The devil wanted to kill him. But Jesus prayed that his faith won't fail him. So all he could do was scare him. Point to him. Call him out. Anybody? Anybody? Some, some of y'all going through that right now, right? People calling you out. People trying to scare you. People talking about you. That's him. That's the one right there. But they using profanity, latent words, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but that's the only thing they are authorized to do. <laughs> they can't go in the further right. They can talk about you. They can scandalize your name. They can talk behind your back. They can betray you. They can say all manner of things against you. But the, if the whole past say they can't touch you, oh my 
my goodness. They can't touch you. If the hall pass says they can only go so far, they can only go so far. Matter of fact, if the hall pass says they can't come on your street, baby, they will have a flat tire around the block. Give me somebody needs to shout glory. Here it is. Let me finish with this thing right quick. Here it is. I, I love this that Jesus said, I pray for you, which is a shout right there, knowing that, that he prays for us, right? He he's 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 like the in-betweener between God and us. He's a reconciler. He, I love that. Hey, don't worry about it. I I pray to the Father for you. I, 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 I pray that, that your faith won't fail. So you good. But you still going through. But you ain't got to worry about it because there's a few jobs that you fail. How did Peter fail? You don't know how he failed. I'm with you. I got your back. I die for you. You know, that's, we sing songs. Oh, Lord, I love you more today. You care for me in such a special way. And then the devil get a hall pass right after you leave service to have a car come and almost cut you off the road. And the same mouth that you just got through blessing God with, you cuss them. That mother, mom, mom, mother, you better do something. This is my mother. You don't have to raise your hand. I'll raise it for you. But even after that, God wants you to know there's still a future after faith. You may feel bad about it. You know what, guys? I shouldn't have done that. Guys, that ain't me. I don't even feel right. But even feeling that way, you got to understand that God wants me to tell you there's a future after your failure. Here it is. Here it is. Peter failed because he told God, he told Christ, he told Jesus that he's for him, he got his back, he'll never leave him, he'll die for you. You let somebody try to mess with you, Jesus. Jesus said, that sounds good, but you're going to deny me three times for that rooster crow. What? Yeah. Because he knows us, right? You're going to deny me three, three times. And see, that's what the enemy is trying to do to some of, some of you. He wants you to think that that wants you to get so high-minded that you don't think you can fail. I, I, I learned a long time ago, because I used to think preachers were perfect. I, it's just me. Y'all probably y'all probably already knew. Right? Well, I'm just being honest. Y'all know I'm straight out there. I used to think preachers were perfect. I didn't want to be a preacher, but I thought they were perfect. So when he called me, it scared me. I'm like, oh, man, here we go. So I don't want to run because I heard about what happened when folks run from the Lord, Jonah. I said, I sure don't want to be in no ocean. I don't, oh, don't want to get swallowed up by something. I, hey, I, I, I answered the call. But I thought they were perfect. You know when I found out they weren't perfect? When I became a preacher. <laughs> See, some of y'all think I was going to start talking about other preachers. No, I'm talking about yours truly. But yeah, as much as I try, as much as I try to do 100% the right thing, say the right thing, and think the right thing. I, people know I love my neighbors as myself. I love them. I would go above and beyond to help somebody when I can. But the devil knows my weakness, right? Just like he knows yours. He knows that, that I will go to bat for family. So if he want to make me mad, make me get out of character, what does he do? He gets permission to mess with my family. And he knows that affects me. He knows your weakness too. You may not love your family like that. He may mess with your family. You, you may talk about it. Good. You should have gave him my $20 back. But he messed with you on your weakness. And he knows what it is. But even after all of that, even when you fail, there's a future after failure. Here it is. Here it is. I, I, I love the fact that uh, the devil wanted, the devil knew that he needed to go to Jesus for permission to mess with Peter. Just, just listen to that. He knew that he needed to go to Jesus to get permission. So whenever anything happens in your life, E-Top members, you already know this. 
everything that happens is God sent or God allowed. Can't happen no other way. You will not be able to say God didn't know about this. God must not have known about this because it wouldn't have happened if God knew. He must have been sleep. No, he never sleeps, no slumbers. Everything that happened. And if you really understand that and you grasp that concept, that everything that happens is God sent, he, he orchestrated it, or he allowed it, I think you'll have a different perspective when you start to go do things, when, when you start to consider yourself a failure. I think you will understand that, God, you have to allow this for some reason. I may not see it now, but I may see it later. Oh, there have been plenty of times. I was wondering why I was going through certain things. But God later on showed me, now look back. You remember when you were complaining about that, Bishop? Look back. You remember when you were understand you didn't know how, why that was going on, Bishop? Now you do. And I'm like, oh, God, I didn't know it at the time. Forgive me for the complaining that was coming out of my mouth. But I'm glad that you used that to put me in a position that I am right now. Oh, somebody need to know that your situation right now is not permanent. The, the current thing that you are going through is temporary, but you've got to know that Christ has prayed that your faith won't fail you now. Y'all know there's a saying that feet don't fail me now when you got to get out of a situation and you got to get out of it real quickly. And you say, oh, feet don't fail me now because you want your feet to real, move real fast to get you out of the situation. No, it ain't about your feet. It's about your faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to have your faith. So you need to say, faith don't fail me now. God, I trust you. I depend on you. I love you, God, more today, Lord, than I did before because I know that I have a future after I fail. Yes, if you find yourself struggling in a certain area of your life, know that God has given the enemy a hall pass. He cannot go any further. He cannot affect any other area that God has not given him permission to do so. And if you understand that, by golly, you will understand everything that happens in your life going forward. Why did this happen? God, you must have allowed it. Because what, what used to do happen, and this is what I used to do. I raised my hand. I used to give the devil so much credit. And he deserves none. He was giving credit. God, the devil, devil is busy. He's like, oh, you just keep It's like I'm patting the devil on his back. He's busy. Look what the devil did. Boy, that's a mess. That devil is strong. That devil is powerful. Just using people. He's like, yeah. But you know what I began to do? I ain't giving that joker no credit. He can't do nothing that God doesn't permit him to do. All the glory goes to God, saints. All the glory goes to God. And because of that, when things happen and I don't like them, when things happen or things are said and I dislike them, I don't say, oh, I can't believe this. I go to God. God, you must have allowed that for some reason. And I don't see it right now, but I'm asking that you show me later. Oh, I love that right there. Brother Joseph have this saying, you, you, you see me now, but watch me later. Yeah, that's about faith right there. That's about faith right there. You see me now. You see my struggles. You see my difficulties. You see this. You see that. But watch me later. Because the faith that you have in God will carry you on from this day until your future. There's a future after failure. That God will continue to bless and keep you is my prayer. Don't forget your seeds, your tithes, and your offering. Until next time, be blessed. God be with you. Singing.